For over 50 years, people have come to see the Sharks play. Talent. Skill. Speed. Intelligence. Elite level athleticism. That's not these guys. Biased. One-eyed. Opinionated. More often wrong than right. They make up for their complete lack of talent with pure dribble, gibberish and enthusiasm. This is the E.T. Stan Podcast. Hit the music as the Sharks top the NRL ladder as they head into the round seven clash with the North Queensland Cowboys. Welcome to the E.T. Stan, the Cronulla Sharks fan podcast, where we let our talking do the football. Please do hit the like and subscribe button if you're new to the channel, as it does help us with the algorithms and whatnot. And for those listening to on, us on Spotify, uh, we have an ever-increasing channel of listeners on there as well. So thank you for getting involved in that. Uh, do get involved in the comments of the show. Uh, let us know where we're making mistakes, where we're right, where we're wrong, all the dumb stuff that we tend to do. As Chris Kelly's dancing there. He's going to get his bit to just come <laughs> back and get involved in the show in a second. On this episode, we are going to discuss where Ronnie and Sione sit in terms of the all-time great winger combinations for the Cronulla Sharks. We're going to preview the Cowboys match. <clears throat> the Talico Iro selection headache continues. We're going to talk through that. Um, Franco is going to give us... Uh, hold on, I'm looking at last week's actual thing, so I might have just skipped those points last week because Franco is not giving us five points. Did someone actually add that in, or did I miss it's that? On in the you cheeky buggers. Uh, let's. All right, cool. Kelly's back. It's going to tell me where I've gone wrong. All right, so stuff we might have missed. Chris, you've been away for a week. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, geez, I'm glad I'm back to try and take, take control of this show because it's gone sideways already. Um, look at the volume's oh, going up. We can't even hear each other. About- great. Apparently, we're talking about Dino's CEO update from last week. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Chris, what did we miss? How have we been going since you've been gone? Yeah, well, I tried to listen to a little bit from uh, the intermission of a live concert on last Tuesday's show, so uh, it was a bit interesting trying to do that. But, oh, mate, where, where do we start? Like, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll let Franco pass on a few of the, the pronunciations of the names of Sofi, Talakai, um, Latsko and Sal- Saliva. Um, but then Boldo, the tears. It's just going to be all about the tears for me. Honestly, you were waiting for it. <laughs> I had Zach sit, sit on it. His face was on the floor. We don't even we don't even know how, where to start. I wish I had I wish I had it up there. Actually, I did. I screenshot the tears just so I could rip in. Um, the fact that you had the Rock on the top as the final boss. Now, if anyone knows, Boldo loves going to WrestleMania. They decided a few years ago that WrestleMania was such a large event they'll split it over two nights. So the reason Boldo's tears is so backwards is because he didn't attend night two. There was two nights of WrestleMania. <laughs> we didn't actually see the rest of WrestleMania. It was kind of like Lats watching the first half of the Raiders game and not seeing the second half come back. But why would you do that? Why would you do that? So the fact that he put Cody Rhodes in the middle of there to finish his story, because Bolton actually didn't see him finish the story. And become I a saw champion. the story. It just wasn't very good. Yeah. Franco doesn't know much about wrestling, but he knew who John Cena was. And again, John Cena was there night two. You can't see me. So that's the reason he should have been on the list. But, you know, why would you put The Rock, who, again, didn't wrestle or do anything night two, but Cody Rhodes won the championship and finished the story. He should be on top. The champion is on top. So the tears, as usual, didn't make sense. They'll confuse Williams even more because, one, wrestling references you won't get. Two, players just moving around and just, yeah. Look, there was there were ones that were good. There were ones I'll give you that were pretty good. So let's go. Let's This is... My main point for that for the, the show was obviously the tears. Um, LA Knight, Zach was shaking his head because you made them the new up-and-comers. He's uh, 40 years of age, so he's not really a new up-and-comer. He's 40. <laughs> it's kind of like when R-Truth said John Cena's his childhood hero and R-Truth's actually older than John Cena. So, again, like I said, Cody, Cody Rose, you went Stone Cold Steve Austin, who didn't appear on the show at all, but you could have gone the John Cena tears. Brett or Sean, people might get that. CM Punk wasn't there. He was just sitting there in commentary. Um, so maybe you should have put yourself on the bottom of the tees of not attending night two. Um, I did appreciate, though, that all, all the photos of you. Talk about the players. The players? The players. 
I don't know how Talakai is the final boss when he's at the moment he's playing 25 minutes off the band. How is he the top of the tiers? How is he the top of the tiers? But he's not the champion. And obviously, the best player is Lance is confused by the Daily M, the Daily M ranking winner, Nico Hines, at the moment. He's currently the best player, according to the Daily M judges. They're just throwing points at him every, every single week he steps on the field. So, yeah, we'll, we'll work on this, tiers. It was a good attempt. I, I liked the crossover. It was quite good. Um, the other the other good was the slides of Boulder hamming it up over TV. We were all provided by me over the years. I've taken photos of him on the TV. So, it was pretty funny. The Kyrgios one. Obviously, the uh, Royal Rumble with his jersey. But if Boldo actually stuck around in Philadelphia, he didn't get the actual limelight he wanted because a West Tigers was the random supporter at Raw the following night. So he got the shout-out as the league fan at the WWE. A West Tigers guy, honestly. But other than that, the show was pretty good. I, I, quite, I quite enjoyed it. Obviously, um, yeah, we talked a bit about the Stouse falling in a bit of a hole and it sort of we were all a bit wary of that game. So I'm sure we'll go in. Go into maybe we'll touch a little bit on that the South game. It was Franco predicted it. He said there was a section that was going to be edge of our seat. At that stage of the Saturday night, I was on a box and I wasn't really on the edge of my seat. I was more falling off the edge of my seat, um, but I wasn't too worried that we were going to lose that game. Um, I did tip Sharks thirteen plus. Uh, unfortunately, Lats and I decided to bet thirteen plus. Well, I made Lats in charge because I couldn't see my phone in front of my face, um, and we only won by twelve. So. I'll take a 12-point victory over South, but I would have liked the 13-plus, but that's how it is. Any commentary on the players? Ramey and Williams uh, we didn't touch on? No, nothing, nothing on the players. I think I think this when we go into the Cowboys round seven, we'll talk more about where we're sort of going in this direction. I, I, I thought it was still a solid win where we should have won. We could have been cronullified, but it wasn't. So I'll take a two-point win. It's, you know... Coming off the double points game, I thought we beat the buyer handsomely and stayed on top. Well, all right, that was that was some rant. Uh, that was very enjoyable. <laughs> that uh, I've been on the bench for too long. Be back, <laughs> <laughs> that was sit on down, All right, all right, cool. All right, well, we're going to get into uh, the man of the people's social roundup now. Actually, so after Chris Kelly has torn David Boldham in a new one, we'll just uh, <laughs> go through three. And we'll go, yeah, and we'll go like that, and we'll go. Man of the people, Scott Latino, take it away. What have we missed in socials since we've seen you last? All right, mates. Uh, Sharks, Harold Matz, and Tasha Gale teams are both through to the grand final qualifiers. Uh, Harold Matz team mm-hmm. came back from an 18-point half-time deficit to run over and down the Roosters 30-22, to 22, uh, whilst the Tasha Gale team defeated the Roosters Indigenous Academy 24 points to six on a sunny Sunday afternoon at Leichhardt Oval. Um, Harold Matz go on to face Western Suburbs next week for a place in the decider, whilst the girls take on the undefeated Illawarra Steelers, who I think they only played a couple of weeks ago in the prelim on Saturday. So good luck to both those teams next weekend. And um, we've got some great young future talent down there at the Sharks, boys. All righty, on to the next. Ronnie. We do. There's been an abundance of love around for the great Ronaldo Molotalo after that stellar performance against Souths last Saturday night, uh, with some fans stating it was his greatest performance for the club. Um, he was brilliant. Uh, I was watching the rerun today and some of those passes and under that high ball, he was scintillating to watch. Um, what a talent we have here. And I think the top tell, uh, the top tier, or should I say the um, final boss, The Rock, tier is calling. All righty. If you have done today, it would be hard to argue that Ronaldo is not the oh, current mate. top most player, to be honest. Unbelievable. All righty. How um, good was that that offload where he took the took the oh, um, to Teague Wilton? Oh, little... so good. Oh, he's so good. And those, oh god, he's so good. To have the awareness to do that while you're wingers. falling and unbelievable. Well, All righty, well, um, top wing combinations. There were plenty of confused and frustrated Sharks fans in the socials in regards to Sione copping that one week for that solid hit on Bunny's captain, Cam Murray, which saw him exit the game. Um, majority of the fans saying it shouldn't have even been penalised, let alone giving him a week on the sidelines, and I do tend to agree with that. Um, I don't think he got him on the face. I just think it was a, a, a strong hit, and maybe the impact jolted Cam back a bit. And, um, yeah, like a bit unfortunate. Like on the jaw. Looked like he caught him ah, on the jaw. Mate. Failed HIA. Mate, that's a soft tackle in the 80s. 
<laughs> and he has. Not the 80s. <laughs> Well, there was plenty of confusion and disbelief around for that ridiculous disruptor call on Jesse Ramian, and there was also a lot of fans frustrated with our dropout options and the pressure we kept putting on ourselves from going for those short um, short dropouts and getting them wrong. And I'd have to say I agree. I'm a fan of getting the ball as far downfield as you can, trying to force error on the halfway line other than five metres out from your try line. So um, something maybe we'll see different happen there in the coming weeks, but um, or either that or we'll practice it a bit more and get it right. All righty, uh, television exposure. Well, I think I think it's been all right, the dropouts, lads. I haven't, I haven't well, minded the decision. Mate, there was a lot of people blowing up about the pressure we're putting on ourselves and inviting them back in. So, yeah, I don't know. I, look, it's it's better now, I guess, without the penalty. Um, it's just a, you know, play the ball. But um, if you do get it wrong, so might as well chance your arm and try and get the ball back, I guess. But I, I do like the clearing kicks, especially when you've been on your try line, you know, repetitively for many sets and, just want to clear it and get it out of there sometimes, you know. Anyway, there are plenty there's of annoying thought that sometimes hold on, there's a school of thought that it's it can be easier to defend. That's uh, what I've found. You don't have to get back to 10. And... Yep. Yep, fair enough. All righty. There's plenty of annoyed supporters in regards to Sharks getting media snubbed given our top position on the NRL ladder. Uh, one fan's post oh, I was yeah. reading today in one of the forums that uh, Sharks, I think, haven't been or have barely got to mention on NRL 360 since round two. Um, there seems to be more posts of positivity around South's performance and how hard they tried for Dimitri and, and what's going on with his coaching saga rather than anything positive around for the Sharks. Um I'm okay with it. If you can manage to stay in first position and fly under the radar, it can only be good in regards to um, media pressure and media noise and whatnot and go and stick to your game plan and get the job done. All righty. There were some very happy and positive posts in the forums for big man Braden hamlin Wele for making it through his comeback game unscathed for the Newtown Jets against Souths over the weekend. Um, and the way our forwards have been firing of late, he'll slot beautifully back into the team this week, and I can't wait to see him tearing it in the top grade on uh on sunday so welcome back brayden moving on there were quite a few calls around also in the socials for captain cam to play origin this year uh i'll tell you what he has got a great head for origin doesn't he um in is that he's the only person i can think of in the team who's got that real origin mongrel and i think it would suit um his workload and quick play the balls and he's tackling and all that. I think he'll uh, he'll do very well in Origin. Wouldn't look out of place in a Blues jersey at all. So I think he's pretty close to a call-up. Um, in other Origin news, Blues coach Michael Maguire has reportedly held a special meeting with potential playmakers for his upcoming camp in which Nico and Brails were apparently, apparently in attendance. So he may be down a few trips come uh, Origin time. And with that, it's, I guess it's very important having that solid start to the season as if we were to drop a game or two over that period, it shouldn't affect us too much. But um, other player makers that were in attendance were Mitch Moses, James Tedesco, uh, Tommy Turbo, Gutho, and everyone, apparently... Everyone was in attendance. <laughs> da Damien Cook, Latrell, and Cody Walker allegedly declined their invitations. So, might be... Well, three Damien Cook can't even make the South team. <laughs> well, there you go. Might be why. Might have been told he's not allowed to. And um, that's it for the socials, boys. I, I'm not convinced that either of those Sharks guys are going to make the um, make the state of origin. To be honest, well, I reckon we'll Nico see. does. I think Nico does. <clears throat> Can I just touch on that Katoa on one? I, I tend to agree. Like we've been called a couple of times on disruptor penalties, and quite a few games I've seen where disruptors haven't been penalised. And the Katoa's hit on on uh, Cam Murray. I know he went for a HIA, but if you watch Dave Clemmer get penalised for two wild headshots in the last 10 minutes of that Dragons game and probably should have been Sinbin for the first, if not the second, and didn't yep. even get suspended for either of them this week. Like, he literally yes. hit two players around the neck, Dom Young yep. style, and just that was it. On report, play on. It was just bizarre. So, as, yeah, maybe, as I think maybe we started. As I think Franco alluded to in the debrief, the fact that he sat the game out did not help his cause. Um, oh, not at all. But, but in saying that, that shouldn't come into it. I think it, it's if it, it's a hit or it isn't. It's yeah. it's just too inconsistent at the moment. It's ridiculous. All right, Des. Well, Franco's just ahead of his time, really, with that comment. <laughs> he just knew that that was coming. He's just experienced <laughs> NRL like for like 
Cronulla Sharks podcasting pundit. So you should have just expected he would, he would, um, well, that's true. That's true, SJB. He probably just failed because he just didn't know. You probably want him to rest anyway. We got a few good <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, well, he probably didn't want to play in a losing game. Well, look, we've got a few comments coming in on um, on uh, some team player selections, so we'll save those for when we get into that section. But we'll just say good day to Haley, uh, to Harley. Um, look, maybe, maybe, maybe the boys will get on that as the first try score or face on your tip this week, Harley. Who knows what will happen? All right, well, let's get into uh, the next match. As we just move that over there, we'll go the Cowboys round seven preview. So the Cronulla Sharks head into next weekend, taking on fellow top 14, the North Queensland Cowboys in a repeat of that annoying, terrible 2022 finals match. And it's actually the only match the Cowboys have beat us out of the last 11 matches. I would certainly swap out all of those wins for that win in that damn match. I'm still upset about that one. Uh, Sharks have been the bogey team of the Cowboys over the last few years, including if you go way back when um, you can even talk about the seventh tackle try, which was one of the great days as Shark fans. And we all, of course, remember that match at the SFS where James Maloney took the intercept. Um, it'll be kind of fun and sad at the same time to see the return of a couple of our premiership players with Chad and Valentine, I think, named in the team. Good to see them doing well and still playing, but we hope they don't get the chocolates. Look, the Cowboys have been a surprise packet over the last couple of years and present an interesting challenge for the Sharks. Um, but having them come off a good win over the Eels in the last um, match um, in Sydney. So uh, let's get into the team list with our man. Chris Kelly is going to talk us through those. Here we are. I'm just going to do that and I go like that. And the Sharks team has just been named and come up. And Chris is going to talk us through that team list as we go. The Cruella Sharks. Take it away, Chris. It was no, again, we don't really have to change much on a Tuesday. So the big inclusion is obviously Sam Soge, who on the wing replaces Keone Katoa. Uh, the boys are all excited. I can see all the team, all the players are all pumping up their social media with Sam Soge, where he gets to start. Uh, Kale Hero again retains his spot in the centres. Uh, the rest of the, the starting side stays the same. We welcome back Big Toby on the bench and Ueli on the bench. So, again, Fitzy not doing much of a job editing his team. Quite easy to see. We're staying quite consistent on there. Um, excited to see a local junior again debut for the club. So, we'll see how he goes in Sam Stone Street. I'll back Harley as well to get a first try scorer on Sam Stone Street. The boys will be all pumped up if he gets over. That's about it for now, Did I say that the show... Oh, that's it. Did I say that the uh, Cowboys lost to the, Ca- the Eels last match, didn't I? Did I say they won? Correct. What did I say? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, just, I couldn't see the screen, but I knew, that, I knew that you won as well. So. Yeah, right. You were just letting me say the wrong thing there. All right, fair enough. <laughs> we're used to it, sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> You're clearly still a little bit <laughs> being a different If you had an action replay, you would have seen, would have seen our faces. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm looking at the notes here going, no, I'm sure the Cowboys lost to the Eels. I don't know if my my notes are just not any good or whatever. But anyway, look, we've got um, a few comments here. Les has come through and said, great to see our coach realises it takes a squad and Stone Street playing this one. I know you may not agree. The squad is much better balanced with Talakai coming off the bench. Well, Les, you know that I do disagree with Talakai coming off the bench, but I can see your point in terms of it does certainly take a squad. And Les, it is great to have you watching along, keeping us honest, that's for sure. And then uh, SJD's come in. I like murder a guy coming off the bench, but he needs more minutes. I do think that is certainly right as well. That's a great name. Um, Love that name. <laughs> yeah, that is that might stick. Actually, that is the best. That is the best bench in history. Williams, Rudolph, Talakar, and Hamlin Ueli. It's pretty good. However, that's uh, not going to be the segment of. We might do that next week. Is the best Sharks bench of all time. And see if we can find the the, the, um, the all time great Sharks bench. Look, how are we feeling about the Sharks team, Franco? I think I've I've sort of said a few times um, that I think our team maybe lacks a bit of speed. You know, from a, a dropped ball or an intercept pass, someone that can go the length, or if someone makes a half break, get there to support and, and go the rest of the distance. Theoretically, Sam Stone Street has that pace and I'd love to see him 
you know, with fresh air in front of him and, and just go for it, go for it. Um, not exactly happy that we're losing uh, Katoa to see it, but given the circumstance, great to see him get his debut and, and I hope he does really well. Uh, other than that, obviously, it's it's brilliant that Hamlin Ueli is back. I think we have missed him. I do think he is, when he's on song, I think he's our enforcer. I think he really uh, rolls his sleeves up and tramples people. He's also got uh, pace into the line. So, you know, sort of bends the line there and skittles people. So really good to have him back and, and lay a platform for us. He'll sort of take a bit of pressure off, off our other forwards. Um, and you know what? I don't know what he's been doing while he's he's been injured, but if he's well rested and comes in strong, he, he had a good game in the Jets. Um, maybe maybe he comes in fresh and, and really has a good long season instead of one of those stop start seasons we've had the last couple of years with him. Yeah, lads, if you got anything on Kaylero and Dalakai and Stone Street. Yeah, mate, I'm actually pretty excited to see Stone Street. I know someone else who is who dialed into our show not too long ago is Jimmy Munro. He actually called it on the debrief that he he was excited to see Stone Street get a run over Katoa um, in in case of an injury or something like that. I um, it, It'll be nice, as Franco alluded to, to have a player of that speed out the back there. And um, I, I'm glad he's stuck with Eero. I It's just good for his confidence. I... I don't know if Iro stays there when Fanukin comes back or, or what, who knows, but I'm excited to see Toby bring the same intensity that he did last week off the bench. Um, hopefully Talakai gets more minutes. Uh, I can't imagine Ueli getting a heap of minutes. He might be the uh, sacrificial lamb in um, regards to minutes this week. Um, and we'll just see how Jack Williams' uh, core quad holds up. And um, yeah, but geez, we've got some muscle there, don't we? And then Ueli might get the Tom Hazelwood position. And play yep. limited minutes. Yep. Interesting. Oh, you would have thought that Rudolph and Hamlin Ueli are stronger forwards than than Hazelton and Kafusi. So I think you got to look for the Sharks to to really kick away in this match once the um, our second tier forwards and Jack Williams and Talakai come on. My goodness, we we'll put those four guys on. We'll be a better, better, better bunch of forwards than um, the ones that start really. But the starters are doing a stellar job as it oh. is too. Like I thought, Kafusi was brilliant last week. He he started the game with so much intensity. Um, look, just went out hunting the ball and having big runs. And you've got Nikara coming back. Um, he was pretty quiet last week after having a couple of weeks off, and I think you'll see a big game from him this week also. Let's just jump to this Cowboys team before we start mm-hmm. getting your tips. Oh, do we need the music? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I do the team list for once? Can I do the team Go list? For it. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, all right. So this Welcome to the North Queensland Cowboys round 17 to take on the Corolla Sharks. These lackluster bunch of fools. I hope that they'll somehow come down to Points Bet Stadium and get get some get some chocolates, which we know that they're gonna net, not get. Up number one, Scott Drink Water. Yep, cool. Carl Phelps, yeah, you've got to try once. We don't care. Valentine Holmes in the centres. Yeah, you're much better when you play for us. You're rubbish. Tom Chester, <laughs> I've never heard of you or Sammy Valamai. Tom Din, we know you're fast, but you were lucky to make State of Origin that time. But Chad, you're lucky Craig Polamount won a premiership. Otherwise, you would be the worst premiership winning halfback of all time. In the forwards, they've got Jordan McQueen and Jason Chamalolo, who we expect to only play seven minutes because he's too old now. Bruce Rock, has been some problems in the past. I don't like you. A bit of doo yak of I'm telling you, and I'm Jeremy Nano, how good is he? Can we talk about how good my fin of presentation was? That's right. Oh. And Ruben Cotter also there. Jake Granville still playing in this squad with Griffin Neen, Sam McIntyre, and Jake Kosiusku. And the coach, well, he's an ugly looking bastard, isn't he? <laughs> and that is that is that is the Cowboys team. Like, Good day to you, Scooter. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh and yes, uh, Cowboys are overrated to finish night <laughs> tonight. And maybe I should do the opposition team list every week. What Mate, we I wish you had were there to do it last week. Uh, <clears throat> Apologise to a great. Northern Rivers player and Jack Gosky. It's quite easy to say that last name. <laughs> you made up an absolute 
absolute barrel of such an easy name to pronounce. But anyway. Oh, Jack Gosky. Jack Gosky. Yeah. I was doing so well. You were Northern <laughs> River boy, <laughs> Manly, Manly, South, oh, that's, Cowboys. I'll tell you what, George. they've got some forwards, the Cowboys, don't they? They're, I, you know what, I actually, I think they're in a quite a similar position to us and given they've lost uh, labour to a season-ending injury and Tua Luggy is a massive loss out for them. They get Valamai back, but again, being one of those Fijian wingers, he's a bit of rocks and diamonds. So I think we've escaped with a little bit of uh, their pace out the back because Tua Luggy is unbelievable as their winger and he's gone out with a hamstring injury. Um, but yeah, their forward pack and their bench is quite similar to us and uh, be quite interesting matchup, I think. I think they're in a, in a position like us all season where they've started either slow or well behind. They were behind to the Dragons 18 0 after 15 minutes and come back and absolutely put, I think, 50 points on them as well. Um, again, they were down to Brisbane behind and sort of battled back. And again, like you said, they uh, lost to Parramatta, but they seem to be a, 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 in a similar position to us where they can score points, but the defense still isn't really there. So. I could see this as being an absolutely back and forth dry track Sunday at Shark. Will be a bit scary of how many points are going to be put up on the board. I think they're a fast ad lib team that throw the ball around, and I'm not entirely sure how we're going to react to that. So I just hope we're we're alert and aware as to what may happen. Um, careful of the second kick, and um, just yeah, be on guard, Sharkies. Lats, any comments on the? Uh, yeah, on the mate. It's gonna... What do you make of what? Am, what do you make of the return of Holmes in the chat? Tony, Holmes has been hitting his straps a bit these last few weeks. He's been scoring a few tries, but um, Scotty Drinkwater is one you got to look out for. He hunts around, sniffs around the ruck there, and can be pretty sneaky over the try line. But I think it's going to be our biggest test to date uh, this season. I think, um, especially after them coming off a fairly close loss last week. I don't know, but I've just got a feeling we're going to win this one comfortably. I, I think we're going to win this one 13 plus, And I think uh, the disruptor Ramian is going to get the first try and Nico will get six Dally M points, even if he doesn't play. <laughs> I, like, I like how we're like, oh, it's going to be a really tight match. And then by the end of the time that we're talking about it, we're all convinced the Sharks are going to win 13 plus. As I show the um, the ET stand tipping comp there, yeah, well, Voldo is still leading that on four. That's Kelly and Franco on three. And Williams, will you suck on two? Can I just say with that, there was one week I didn't get to get a get a vote in, so I reckon I'd be top with you there too, mate. <laughs> no, I could put your vote It's in. your fault for tipping, for missing the tip. Oh, no, mate, I was in international waters. So there's nothing I could do. It's all right. It's all right, <laughs> it's all right <laughs> boys. Probably... For Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Should we sing the song now, Ames? Oh, ben. no. Uh, oh, don't start gonna, him. Please. You know she's going to punch you straight away. Um, you know what? I'm not there, Ames. I'm not going to be there this week to say sing the song when we are about to win. So you can have that mantle in the ET stand and bring that up. And yes, maybe we should sing the song now. Let's get that rubbish bloody team off the screen and bring back the Sharkies team. There they are. All right. Well, we got Lats's prediction. He is saying that we're going to get a Sharks win. Uh, oh, God. SJT, a bad omen. Look, we've had a lot of bad omens. <laughs> and we, we say that we're all going to win. To what about that time I won the. Um, there's, of course, the famous time where I w travelled up to North Queensland in 2015 to watch the Sharks in the semi-final. I had $2. We had nothing to do for three hours. I put the $2 in the, the skill tester and won a Corolla Shark football. And we said, oh, what a brilliant omen. And then we know how that match end ended. Uh, so, and then, yes, I don't even sing the song at the seven <laughs> until six. Right. No, well, we know that the Sharks could still... The, the Sharks have still got time to make a replacement error and then not even bloody win the game because we had 14 players on the field at the same time. So, all right, well, we've got Lats's tip. Franco, what's your tip? What happens? Oh, I am tempted to tip against us. Boo. But I hate doing so while we're on a streak. So go the Sharkies. Hey. Go the lads. Um, Are you tip the Sharks one, blue, let's up. do it. Fair enough. By how much? I don't know. I don't think. I don't think it's going to be thirteen plus. Um, maybe eight points. I reckon. Um, I also would like to see. It was the. Uh, it's the Paul Green medal again. We we won it twice. 
First was Nico, then was Connor Tracy. So I'd like to see it three from three. Um, maybe a, uh, a Braden Trindle uh, gets to wear the medal this time. Sounds good. Christopher. Uh, Bottle one tip of the tip, tipping comp is kind of like the Dolphins on top of the NRL ladder. It's not going to last long and who cares? So it's early in the part of the season. I'm going to say we're going to win 30 to 20. Positivity. And I was... And I'll be pushing Amy to sing the song quite early on. We'll see how see how many guests there we can get out of the whole ET stand. I'm making my debut 2024 ET stand debut finally. Finally, so I can do a debrief. No. I'm pumped. So I'm probably the bad omen, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, look, I too am going to tip the Sharks. I think we'll win by six, maybe seven. Maybe there'll be an odd point in this game. There's certainly a Chris, field goal in it. The, um... Chris Kelly, you were the bad omen at the Leichhardt against the Tigers, so. <laughs> Truth comes out. Yeah, and I yeah, like how you said, either oh, this could be the biggest test. I like how you said this could be the biggest test for the Sharks. Oh, wait a minute, we failed the, the, the smallest test. Like, it wasn't even, it was like a trial. I know, I, know. I think they're going to come yeah, with yeah. more intensity than the Tigers. I just think we're going to be ready for them. I think we will be, too, especially with that good-looking bench, Williams, Rudolph, Talakai, Hamlin, Ueli. I think the Sharks will win. Uh, I think we'll be winning by seven. And I'll be looking forward to sending you guys a text message saying, um, seeing the we'll song the now and you guys off. getting in. Um, we've got a comment coming here through from Daniel, who's far more intellectual than us. Home's always dangerous. This is true. Felt does something freaky. Cowboys half, Sharks by one. Pill, Heinz or Trindle, field goal to crush those cows. Well, that would be good fun. It'd certainly give you guys a heart attack. It would mean the Sharks would not be singing the song until right at the end. All right, that was our Cowboys prediction. Hopefully the Sharks can do us proud and keep on top of the table as we move into. Look, the comment was made last week. Is this the greatest winger combination that the Sharks have had of all time? And so the Sharks have got a brilliant history of some great wingers, especially some great combination of wingers. Uh, the great Edric Lee comes to mind, uh, Leon Bott, um, but no, seriously, we've had some absolutely brilliant wingers and also some great centres. And as I bring in the present screen, and thanks to our... If you want to go down a brilliant rabbit hole, you can um, actually go on to um, Rugby League Project and actually click on the Sharks and actually look at position uh, by... Um, or Sharks players by position. And the great Sasai Fecky is actually the Sharks player who has played the most games on the wing. Um, with a 56% win rate with Ray Corcoran, uh, one of our early trailblazers from those late 60s and 70s teams being the second most peered winger uh, with Luke Cavell, Matt Rogers, Glenn Coleman, Rick Burke, Sione Katoa, Steve Edmonds, uh, Ronaldo Mulatalo and Bob Weir. That is a pretty stellar looking list of wingers. So I've, we issued the challenge to the, to the lads during the week to name their greatest ever Sharks winger combinations so we're going to do our best to go through that now in a five to one style format and i'm going to present slide show there get that ready and then i'm going to press stop screen look at this just tech this is just so good well fingers crossed here we go all right there it is greatest sharks winners combinations all-time panel picks and discussions do you agree with the panel um and do you think we've got it right? All right, let's get into it in the Stephen Franklin preferred style and format. So we're trying out Lies. Right Whether this is Lies. Right. Whether this got is... the buff. Well, no, this is the way that you said that we should do it. So, all right, coming in fifth on all of our discussions on the fifth greatest Sharks winger combinations, this is where we land. So Kelly's got Luke Cavell and Leon Bott, of all people. Uh, Williams had Colin Best and Brett Howland. Franco and I, well, we just know that Franco and I are going to be lined up. So Rick Burke and Steve Edmonds, Lats has gone with uh, the 80s combination to Glenn Coleman and Sean Watson. And yes, I've got Rick Burke and Steve Edmonds. Uh, Chris, let's just start with you. Why did you choose of all partners for Lee Cavell? Leon Bott, what made you think they were a great combo? Well, look, Luke Cavell had so many fleeting partners throughout the whole time he was there and carrying those horrible teams that he was on and slotting goals from left, right and centre. So I actually mentioned to you when I did the list that um, we actually had a lot more better centres than we had wingers combination. So 
I thought, why not include the one-time game player, Leon Bott, and put him next to Luke Cavell, because Luke Cavell would just carry Leon Bott anyway. He didn't need anyone else. He was the third-legged winger. He was our slowest winger, but what a what a goal scorer. So um, I couldn't find a, a, a suitable partner for our favourite, Luke Cavell. What about Missy well, Luke Cavell and anyone typically pretty good. Could have been so many comment. He had so many combinations. He did, but it could have been Missy Talapapa. Could have been. Could have been Missy Talapapa. Um, Franco, what do you know, of Rick Burke and Steve Edmonds? Um, Rick Burke, been there with the club almost since the beginning. Uh, was in three with an asterisk of our grand finals. Uh, obviously, the third one being the replay, and was also in the winning uh, Amco Cup team. So he's he's been there through he thick was. and thin, has seen a lot of success. Um, Steve Edmonds, long long term Sharks winner, um, and they paired up together for quite a many years. So you know they were there, working working hard when um, when the Sharks were sort of formative years and and doing really well for the Sharks there. Uh, Pretty pretty high on the try scorers list as well. Um, and to go Rick and, Burke got and, a lot and of tries. Got a lot of tries. He got a try um, in the seventy three grand final too as a as a replacement. Yes, he did. So but that one's for that one's for you, Williams. I knew you, you would have said that if you were on the show. <laughs> so I made sure that I had that. Um, Lats, you had Glenn Coleman and Sean Watson. I know they don't feature on anyone else's list, so we'll talk to them at this point. Yeah, mate. Um, I remember watching these guys run around the eighties down there at Caltex Field. Um, my mum used to take us down to the games every week, and we'd sit there on the the old timber sleeper chairs and watch these guys. I especially have fond memories of Coleman. I remember, especially in that eighty eight season, he was on fire. He's scoring plenty of tries, and he was. he was one of the fastest blokes around, mate. So uh, for the time, so yeah, went to these guys. And given it was such and Glenn a good Coleman, year. They, they were they were sixth on my list. Glenn Coleman and Sean Watson. Oh, okay, they were just missed good. out. I hope Les is still watching. I'd love to hear Les's, um, Les's take. And, yeah, we've got a few people coming through here. We've got Matt Rod there. We've got SJD telling us that Matt Rogers is the GOAT winger. There's an argument to be made, uh, SJD, that the best winger combination is Matt Rogers and whoever is on the other wing. So that is that could be an all-time consideration. All right, anything else? Uh, look, Williams has gone with Colin Best and Brett Howland. Um, which is an interesting combination because uh, Brett Howland typically did play with, with what he typically played with, with Matt Rogers and left at the same time as him. So, yeah, interesting choice there for you, Matty. But all right, fair enough. Maybe showing your age there, you young buck. All right, on to the next. Oh, I've got to click over here. All right, cool. All right, so number four, we've got Ray Corker and Bob Weir on the Kelly list, which is also the same as mine. So, yeah, Chris got that one right. Uh, Williams has got Matthew Rieck and Paul Mellor which was the 2002 combination. Uh, Paul Mellor has a very high win rate as a winger. There we have we have Luke Cavell featuring with another winger. Of course, Franco, as Mena mentioned, his all-time favourite, Nathan <laughs> Stapleton. <laughs> and, and I've got Ray Corcoran and Bob Weir. But look, Laps has come in and said Ronnie and Sione only feature fourth on his list. That's parked Ooh. actually. We'll come back to that. Ooh. We'll Whoa. come back to that. Whoa. Franco, why don't you take us Ooh. through Nathan Stapleton Ooh. and how good he was as a winger? Yeah, so, well, Nathan Stapleton was just an out-and-out out gun as far as I'm concerned. I know he was underrated, maybe not a not a favourite of many, but I thought he was really good. And he and Luke Cavell only paired on the wings once, uh, and it was for a loss, but it was still a wing pairing, so it works for this list. I uh, love Luke Cavell, love Luke Stapleton, so great. Uh, Nathan Stapleton, so great way to uh, to get them on the list together mm -hmm. here. Um, you're right, Missy Telepapa. Hold on, Luke you're Cavell's. saying that Luke Cavell and Nathan Stapleton are a better <laughs> wing combination than Rick Burke and Steve Edmonds? Yeah, sure they are. Yeah. All right, <laughs> cool. That is the most ridiculous <laughs> thing. Rick, okay, cool. They never won a match. At least, at least I'm not saying uh, <laughs> Molotalo and Katoa are a fourth best, so oh, right, I'm absolved. Ah, oh, look, your de your your deflection by attacking another deflection. panel member is not going to be accepted. Deflection. You just can't say, oh, "I'm going to take on just try and deflect towards lats." It's not going to work. <laughs> Luke Cavell, look, Luke Cavell was very good, and Nathan Stapleton sadly didn't get as many matches for the Sharks as I would like. Um, 
And then in terms of Ray Corker and Bob Ware, um, there's a lot of chat around some try that Ray Corcoran scored where he like ran the length of the field down the sideline against like Manly and the Roosters or someone um, has scored. And Lee, he run Ray Corker and got, um, yeah, the 73 season just scored an absolute mountain of tries. Chris, you would have watched a whole bunch of Ray Corker and matches. What do you make of Ray? Well, how old are you trying to say I am? <laughs> <laughs> This is not real great. That's why I stayed no. out. Of, that's why I stayed out of those, those older players because I couldn't assess to them because I never saw them play. Oh, uh, listen, he was he was nominated. Like I said, he was in the seventy three grand final. He was in the early teams of the Sharks. He also was nominated as a winger for the half century of greatest Cronulla Sharks. He's currently still, you know, forty odd years retired and still the fifth or sixth highest Sharks try scorer in the history of the, of the Sharks. So how they get on that list? Look, he kind of kind of like our uh, combination of Franco's, Luke Cavell, and Nathan Sableton. He kind of ca- carried Bob Weir a little bit, but um, Cochran was the try scorer and did all the work. But we loved Nathan Sableton. We always knew Franco it was his fan favourite. We sort of gave him a bit of stick over it. He's obviously going through his personal struggles at the moment. Um, but if you brought up that list that you had earlier, well, I was going to point it out where Stapo was sitting in his win rate percentage was about... 37% it was down on the 21st best Sharks winger. So, uh, Franco, I think you better lower your expectations down there, mate. So You you also remember the teams that he was in and what the club was going through most of that time. So, Oh, so was Luke Cavell. So was Luke Cavell. Yeah. yeah. Luke Cavell. Luke Cavell. I mean, he's got a better percentage of actually time on him. Look, Leon Bond's got a zero percent. For us. Sorry. Not our best wing in combination, never played together, but slowest ever wingers ever, John Davidson and Luke Cavell. That's true. They were very slow, those guys. And, yes, Scooter, it was uh, Glenn Coleman uh, in the VB ad. Uh, worth calling out that Williams has nominated Matthew Reek and Paul Mellor here. Uh, Paul Mellor played swing for 17 matches in the 2002 season and has an outrageously high win percentage and scored an outrageous number of tries uh, before that was his departure here before coming back to play for us. A little bit later. And Matthew Reek, the smelliest, fastest man. Jeez, he did was electric and did get a whole bunch of tries. Uh, so Reek he was a great Harry. player too. Hey, Boldo, how did, how did Paul Mellor score those tries, mate? Like, what was the play? That, what was the go-to play? Well, I think it was Chris McKenna throwing in the ball, wasn't it? Yeah, the Statue of Liberty. The, the New Statue York of Liberty Statue play? Liberty. The, natural, the Statue of Liberty New York play. All right, let's move on to three. All right, so Kelly has now got Ronaldo Molotalo. Williams has come up with Matt Rogers and Richie Barnett, who feature a fair bit on this list. Franco has now listed the grand final selection of Valentine Holmes and Sasaya Becky. <laughs> Lats comes in with Matt Rogers and Richie Barnett, as do I. So um, I guess it makes sense to talk about the great Matt Rogers and Richie Barnett as a combination. Uh, Lats, how good were those two? Mate, they were brilliant, especially that 1997 year, um, making the Super League final. Um, Matt Rogers, how good! Like I, Richie Barnett, dual internationals. I remember watching one game there. Richie Barnett, he was fearless. He he went up for this ball, got absolutely belted. I've never seen anyone's nose run like a tap in it in my life. I think he sat out for about three or four games after it. But um, just tough as nails, fast, and uh, they were electric. Those two. Yeah, I loved Richie Barnett as a player. He was so so good. If you look at it. In terms of international international status, like Rogers and Richie Barnett were like the gun outside backs for their international teams at the time, um, which made them very good. But it's tough to argue that basically anyone who played with Matt Rogers was basically the best wing combination. Uh, I've just got to agree with this, JD here. When I sent all my mail through to you, Boldo, my Matt Rogers only had one T. So did I. On that one, SJD. <laughs> Yeah, that's we've, true. You've seen Baldo's uh, team list yeah. in the past, the spelling on the tears. We know it's uh, we know it's a host stuff up. He just has a bit of auto. Just a bit of auto, correct? A bit of chat, GPT. It's all good. A bit of chat, GPT. Actually, just one even said that. Actually, it is only one T. Yeah. Oh well. Look, if that's Roger, the, Roger's if that's, that. Look, that's the only mistake I'm going to make on this list is the fact that there's a there's two T's in that because <laughs> clearly so far my list is the best and the most accurate. <laughs> All right, well, Franco's come through with the grand final pair of Holmes and Fecky. 
Um, we'll talk about them in a minute because I have a feeling they're about to feature a little bit higher from a few people on this list as we move to number two. And we have Kelly's come through with Rogers and Howland. Uh, Williams has got Holmes and Fecky. Franco's got Mulatalo and Katoa. Lats has got Rogers and Howland. Back to that point of Rogers and anyone. And then I've come through with Mulatalo and Katoa. Uh, Franco, why don't you talk us through your positioning of Mulatalo and Katoa ahead of Holmes and Fecky? I think as we were talking in the debrief, they're just on fire at the moment. I think obviously we will be forever grateful to Holmes and Fecky for being part of that grand final team, uh, both through the season and, and the winning game itself. Um, even if Fe Fecky went off injured partway through, uh, he was clearly a, a key member of that, that team. Um, I would say they probably were the first wing pairing, maybe even in the NRL, that the commentators took notice of people coming in off their wing, running hard, doing the tough yards, getting meters, um, taking the pressure off the forward so that they could then get back on side and, and take the last few sets. They really sort of, I would say, were the pioneers for that. However, Mulatalo and Katoa have taken that to the next level. They just are destroying teams in terms of meters gained. And they've also got the flashier finish. Um, the number of times I saw Fecky try and barge over in the corner instead of diving for the corner, I was pulling my hair out, mate. Just just dive. Don't try and bounce off players. I loved seeing Fecky being shot out of a cannon. He had that, that weird knack of, of not thinking he was that fast, and then he would just boom, straight through the, the defensive line. It was great. Um, but look, the, the highlights reel of Mulatalo and Katawa, it just pips them. They're, they're almost the complete package. I think they're great. The, the positions evolved so much more over the last few years, The um, that winger position in in terms of um, you know the, the wingers backing up and getting you out of trouble with some big runs. And even the little guys, they're just like, Sione's not big, but man, it doesn't he tear in. Yeah. Unbelievable. Awesome. I'm, I'm with you, Franco. They do come in off their wing quite a bit, but that's in defence, so. <laughs> well, <laughs> shots fired, shots fired. I don't, um, I'll, I'll have to go look at the line of the tape, but I don't think the other guys are too crash hot at not coming in off their line. Um, but anyway. And then Kelly and Lats have both named Rogers and Howland. Um, what is that? The 98 to 2001 winger combination which certainly was a successful time. I was spewing when Brett Howland left. Uh, yep. Gorgeous. If you go back and look at his record, he got a lot of tries. Uh, let's take us through your thinking of putting MA Double T Rogers and Brett Howland up. Uh, <laughs> so high. Mate, we're not going to not put Matt Rogers in, but um, no, mate, Brett Howland, the whippet, how quick was he? Uh, he was a machine. Just love seeing him take that ball up in open space and, um, mate, the tries he scored uh, – yeah, I couldn't go past him there, mate, in that 99. I know we lost Rogers for, oh, I think it was about 12 weeks there in 99, was it, with an injury? And then for him to come back and um, bow out in that uh, game against the Dragons early. But, yeah, mate, I couldn't go past them. They they were just weapons on the edges there. You just knew as soon as Rogers went injured in that match that it was... You knew it was no, over, mate. so good for us. And it? it's just... just they, hung, they hung tight Why there for a while, but... Oh, I just sometimes going through this damn podcast just brings up so many. I can yeah, still see him hobbling off the moment. I can still see him hobbling off the field. Oh, oh stop it. He's been off. running on the sideline trying to get oh, it right. Oh, I can still see oh, it. Oh, that was the worst. He taped up. That was Blake. absolutely the worst. All right. Well, look, let's then go through the final prediction positions. Well, Franco had Rogers and Howland as number one, so I guess we can bring you in now. Number one, SJD, Matt so Rogers, highly. the GOAT. I agree, SJD, the GOAT, Matt Rogers. It was very difficult not to put Matt Rogers and someone else in all five positions here. Um, so in trying to stay true, I just put him at number one. And my favorite wing pairing with him was Brett Howland. Speed, talent, uh, that was just amazing, that combination. They are really good. Obviously, a a very uh, successful period at the Sharks as well. So great memories. 
Yeah, fair enough. All right. And then, uh, look, Kelly and Lats have got Holmes and Fecky, Lux like me. I just think that Holmes and Fecky won every other combination zero. Like, they've got the ring. And so, 100%. you know, you, you saw the big, the big difference they made is how they trucked the ball up. Yep. Um, and I actually noticed that the Melbourne Storm get back into that grand final when Fecky goes off injured. It was a big moment for us. And Fecky just hit it up. And I know he's, oh, he didn't get as many tries, but just his defense and the way he hit it up, um, he was just, just so good for us. And, you know, the, the fact that we had good wingers gave us an all around strong one through 17. And I thought they were critical. And yep. obviously, Val got all of those tries. What did he get? 20 tries in that season. Um, I think it's you just can't go past Holmes and Fecky. Look, Williams' recency bias is just so pronounced there with Mulatalo and Katoa. So I think yeah, only Williams was prepared to make them top dog. Uh, if they were to win, if they were to win, then maybe maybe we could put them higher. And then Franco didn't have a spot for Richie Barnett in your list at all, mate. Like, come on. Richie Barnett was even better than Brett Howland. Like, come uh... on. No, I didn't think so. Like I said, if I was gonna gonna put Matt Rogers plus someone, how many someone, internationals did Brett Howland play? No, nah, he was no. he was. <laughs> no, nah, sorry, <laughs> Brett Howland is is way better. He would have been with Kiwi. <laughs> just just that big no, loose fitting anyway. Sharks jersey flowing in the wind as he Flowing. sped down the sideline. Yeah, awesome Tucked stuff. In. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just going to close this off. Looking at your list, I think all of your lists are wrong and mine's right. Like, how can mine... <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just I'm just going to say something, guys. Knowing knowing our host, he probably waited till everyone submitted all of their choices <laughs> 100%. and then had a look at what was what and researched why we picked what we did and cherry-picked the ones that he thought would work because I don't think there's anything original in Baldo's list at all. What do you mean? Well, uh, yes, no, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I also looked at who else did I look at? I looked at, um, I thought Talapapa and Cavell were also good, and Glenn Coleman and Sean Watson, but I just couldn't find a way to, um, to get Paul Mellor and into the, you know, he just didn't play enough as wing. So, uh, I couldn't get him in there. Those are the, those are the other ones that I considered, but you know that I looked at all of the players. Uh, and did all that sort of stuff. So anyway, all right. Well, look, we digress. Oh, as well, not yes. You were surprised that I didn't have Melor in there, but like you said, I didn't think he played enough wing. I'm sure if we had, it was quite difficult to do as well. Um, I think if we had a list of one to five of just best wingers, it'd be a little bit different. But Dean Carney and Chris Gar, yeah, there's, there's mate, there's plenty. You could have there's plenty of guys out there we could have had. We all love Missy Telepapa. I think Scott saw the Daily Messenger play live, actually, as well. <laughs> I think that's right. All right, well, let's move on. Look, see uh, the, the final boss. See for Talakai has again been named on the bench and is not in the centres with Kale Hero retaining his spot. Uh, boys, I can't remember who I was throwing to first on this one. I think I was throwing to you, Kelly. What do we make of, what do we make of Talakai on the bench? Look, I, I was quite surprised when Katoa was suspended and I honestly expected the team for Eero to be shifted to the wing and Talakai to come back in the centres. There is obviously a few things they're still looking at and maybe, you know, his bench spot is a bit more golden to our team than it is him playing 80 minutes in the centres. So I'll take it as that, that he can fill those second row spots, he can fill into the back line because uh, otherwise our, our forward bench is pretty heavy. So I don't mind at the moment. Like we said, I think if things change, well, I think when Lat said, like, Fanukin comes back or, you know, we get a few more troops on deck, it might change a little bit. But at this stage, he seems to be doing a job. I felt sorry for him. I thought he was going to score that last try to top off the game and the ball just happened a bit to have a funny funny bounce to it. And um, I thought he was happy to dive on it, but he didn't and we still won anyway. So at this stage, I think his position is quite valuable as that kind of utility guy that he's doing. But... We'll see how it all plays out. I, I, I was quite shocked by Stone Street coming in. Not upset about it because I like to see a local junior get blooded through and a bit like Franco said, a bit of speed. But at this stage, yeah, I think his position's quite quite handy to our quad. Franco, what do you make of the Fitzgibbon selection dilemma with these extra outside backs? 
yeah, I don't, I don't know if dilemma is the the right word, but I agree with with CK and even yourself, Bowler. You keep calling for the the Gerard Beal on the bench. I think that um, Talakai gives us that flexibility. He he's able to play many positions, but as an added bonus, we don't lose size by having him on the bench, uh, whereas we would if it was a, a traditional outside back there or another sort of utility half, dummy half kind of player. Mm. Uh, we know that if, if Brails goes down, uh, McInnes can, can step up and, and sort of move into dem- dummy half. So that's not a problem there. Um, and then the lock and um, edge places are, are covered. So I think it's, I think it's good. We know that um, Fitzgibbon came out in one of the press conferences and, and pretty much, I'd like to say he echoed us, but I'm sure he doesn't even know who we are. Um, mentioned that that Talakai's been oh, no, he one watches of every the, episode. Yeah, every episode, of course he does. Um, He's actually what, SJD. He, <laughs> <laughs> he he came out and said that Talakai is probably the the best player the first few rounds, and you know what? I think we we've sort of said that we agree with that, and I think that you know when when we've got a full squad, he will probably be back. Uh, full-time in the centre position. But at the moment, while we've got the luxury of, of moving players around, uh, you know, glass half full scenario, it's great giving Eero that, that opportunity to get experience and get better. And uh, hopefully, you know, we, we understand sort of what player he is and where he fits in with the team. That's what's the uh, social reaction been? Yeah, mate, a lot of people are very happy with Talakai coming off the bench, to be honest, in the socials. Um, I'm okay with Talakai staying in the forwards um, as long as he's okay with it. I don't want a player of his stature becoming disgruntled and wanting out because he's lost his position to you know, a young kid in the in the centres. Uh, I, I think he's earned the spot. I think he's a good centre. Um, in saying that, I think I'll, Iroh will grow into a much stronger centre too. And given our soft draw, I think it's the perfect time to blood him like what Fitz is doing. And um, as long as, happy, as Talakai is happy playing in that, you know, in that bench sort of utility role or impact role off the bench, I'm 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 okay with it. He's definitely got I impact think the thing coming about off. Talakai, the bench, he has got impact. He also has the potential to come off the bench and just win you a game <clears throat> if a couple of players go down injured. And so yep. he's not going to be brilliant every single game, but I think it's like I can kind of rationalize the choice. Certainly at this stage of the season, it makes sense to bloody row and give him some time. And I guess we've got to put Stone Street in. We did also establish as Eero isn't a winger. We've seen that before, haven't we, Franco? Eero yeah. wasn't so good on the wing. So I think it makes sense to give Stone Street a spot there. Look, I, I still think Talakai is our top centre, but he's also uh, our best bench player and the most useful player off the bench. So I think for now, uh, I'm happy for him to play there. All right, moving on. I noticed this the other week that there is uh, conjecture around the Sharks team song. Um, as we just booed up the team song, actually. <laughs> up, up, Cronulla. The boys in the black, white, and blue. Is this the version? <laughs> up, up, Cronulla. All right. What's the next line? Name of the shark fits you. All right, that's what you think it is, lads. What do you reckon it is, Kelly? The, that is correct, but the original version actually was We Are All Depending On You was actually the original version according to the uh, History of the Sharks. Shout out to Williams. Um, but, yeah, it is it is fits you. That's the one they, they sing in the in the sheds, but you can probably see a few newer players might mumble that under their breath anyway. So uh, it used to be Depending On You, but now it's fits you. Franco, what do you think it is? The players do mumble that and they... Uh... <laughs> believe we're proud to mumble that for quite some time, especially during 2016. Um, I think that's been corrected at some point somewhere along the line. They do actually now try and sing that line. But, yeah, I'm with the lads that uh, Name of the Shark fits you. I also thought for a while it was the Name of the Shark hits you was also um, a word that was used. Because I noticed the other day on the sheds inside the Sharks, it's got the line, we all believe in you. Here we go. Anyone in the comments, what do you think it actually is? I've actually yeah, got a, um, an like alternative you, we could use, Boldo. Yes. What about yes. 
Talakai and Iro, what the will Fitzy do? <laughs> well, I guess you also have to decide what's actually better: the name of the shark fits you, or the shark hits you, or all we believe in you. So, I like if him. you look like at up, up all of... I know this is getting towards the end of the show, so we kind of have always a bit of character. Carry on. The boys in the black, white, and blue. So it's talking about the boys in the black, white, and blue. The name of the shark hits you. Whereas if we say we're believing in you, we're now talking about we're singing to the sharks. Go out and play without fear. Well, and then we are kind of talking about them. So maybe it should be we believe in you. Uh, so I think it's kind of got the, the things wrong. So I'm not sure where we lean on that. I like I fits think... you. Name of the shark fits you. A shark's a, a predatory animal, a fierce predatory animal, and it's what you wanted You're to be part on the football of the team. Yeah. What does it the mean? I think we all believe in you. <laughs> Mate, can we just we go back to roll out you? the barrel? Yeah, just it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it meant to be? It's meant to we're all believing in you. Is that right? Because it used to be, it wasn't originally written for the supporters, for us to sing, instead of the actual team song, yes. instead of the victory team song. So now it's changed into a victory team song. So instead of saying, yeah, we believe in you, then, you know, why would you say that about yourself? So. Yeah, but that's not what they've got printed up in the, the change rooms. They've got, we believe in you. Where are you looking at that? I saw that on the um, in the team photo in the socials uh, recently in one of the picks this season on one of the with the guy um, what's his name hitting the damn esky? What's that oh, guy not, again. <laughs> not again! Not <laughs> again! Noxy. It's Mark Noxy. It's Mark Noxy. It's Mark Noxy. With the guy in the damn thing. What's that Peter Gout? No. What, what are you doing, you stalker? Zooming in on the the back. <laughs> background of Wait, photos that wasn't the only thing you were zooming on in the showers let me tell there. you not... he was he's probably the one that did like that the... et the photo i like the shark hits you and you and you and you i think that's kind of better so that's my gripe at the moment is i don't like believing you even though i do believe in you sharks i much prefer uh, seeing good football because the name of the shark fits you all right anyway look i don't think we're going to get that right but maybe they need to get back to the the bouncing ball they used to have in the nineties when they used to put it up on the screen when they when they started singing it. So they and the Pepsi ball going and the Pepsi the ball. Pepsi ball bring back the that's the only ball I want to see bring back the, the Pepsi, Pepsi ball the murder ball. ball all right all right well as we bring this episode to a close is there anything that we've missed look I'm going to bring up this comment uh, you guys the three of you guys have gotten a compliment by and the great Ledge Chill is one of the great one of the great Sharks fans thank God some of you guys agree with me and don't agree with everything my cousin says. He seems to love Talakai. Well, I do love Talakai. <laughs> and there's, I hope you haven't broken the remote TV Maybe. control uh, <laughs> anytime this season. Only once, just once. Uh, it's not so remote. SPG there, uh, <laughs> there is out of themselves as not being Fitzy. So, um, you know, that's that's probably what Fitzy would we say. We do love right? SJD. We do. <laughs> well, that's true. He's better than Yeah, of course. If you were, if you were Fitzy, then of course I'm. You're not that. Look, Chris, we went one hour and three minutes without you talking about anything roosters, and now you're bringing up a roosters has been. God. <laughs> um, look, SJD also came up with, and this is a good comment too, and 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 I think he's right, but we just he just didn't have a partner to go with him. Bo Ryan was, you know, you know, ironically. Unironically, unironically, he was probably better off the field for us than on the field. Yeah, media wise, he was much better for us. Yeah, he brought a lot of fans to the Sharks, that's for sure. Yeah, he'd bring a lot of fans to the Sharks. This is true. All right, lads, anything we missed in the episode or we didn't get a chance to talk about? I think we covered it all, mate. Even the team song, geez, it's been a pretty jam packed episode. (laughs) Well, we are talking about the team song because we're singing the team song this week. There's no way the Sharks can lose this week. Franco, anything? Yeah, a bit of a bit of a weird one. Um, I'm always curiously um, attached to the numbers that debutants get, whether it's sharks or anyone else, say cricket, whatnot. Stone Street debuting at number five sixty. That's a good debut number. I love that one. I'd be I'd be happy if I got my my debut with that number. Sometimes. And I know I'm I'm not there. And if I got whatever number, I'd probably accept it. But 
just in the back of my head, I'm like, can I, can I just debut after the next guy to get a better number? I don't know, but <laughs> 560 is a good number. So go strong, Stone Street. <laughs> just throw the game the week prior, oh. mate, and you'll, uh, you'll get the number <laughs> you want. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, look, I think we've covered everything I might want to cover this week. It's sad that I'm in New York City. I know we're crazy with you, Chris. You get to close the show. Oh, even better, yeah. All right. So that's everything I have to say. So we are now going to – hold on. I'm going to boot this up yeah. for you. All right. So that's everything from me this week. So last day, Mr. Kelly, could you close the show, please? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, Franco made a good call last week about our other local junior you miss, he hates missing out on and Chevy Stewart. Made a quite a, a good debut for uh, the Canberra Raiders. I think uh, Eero had five five five. I think I'd rather that, have that debut number. And our uh, other point was, oh, geez, I forgot it now. Was I thought I was going to go Roosters, but we're not going to go Roosters. So, um, <laughs> let's see how we go. Uh, Franco's other second favourite player behind Stapleton, New Brown, signed with the Dragons today as a backup player. So. Uh, we'll get to see New Brown run around and back in the NRL again. Named named this week. Uh, reserves. Reserves, yeah. Still. Still named. Still named. There we go. I always thought it was Shark Fitz Poo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig McLaughlin has had a big impact and is still the funniest comedian <laughs> skit of all time. On all Settle down, Mona. Television and is, <laughs> is still being talked about. <laughs> 20 years later. Oh. Oh, that sounds good. All right. Well, all right, Chris, do you want to close out the show? Do you, do you, I think no, I gave you, a word of you up here. You're doing this. I want you to close out because you've got to go have a nap now, don't you? Don't, surely. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Is there a view out there? Is there any view of the city out there or anything like that? Or? Uh, no, it's just, no. just there's... Um, Is that a scores a nightclub Peloton in the background? Like. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's that's kind of it. All right, well, that was the ET stand for this week. That was the ET stand for this week. Thank you, everyone, for coming in and watching and getting involved in the comments. It was a lot of fun uh, bringing you the show this week. Um, coming up, we have, we'll have the debrief following the Cowboys match. Uh, we haven't worked out who's going to be on that one for us. Um, other videos we've got floating around. There's a really cool classic Cronulla Chronicles, which we've just uploaded onto the YouTube channel which talks to the, what is it, the round 22 Cowboys match, Chris? You were on that one. Um, yep. Which talks through uh, Jack Bird and Jeffrey Robertson playing in the halves uh, against a pretty star-studded Cowboys team, which is setting up our 2016 team. Uh, beyond that, um, yeah, thanks for everyone for getting involved. I won't be at the Sharks this match this week. I'll be watching uh, from the States, but Franco, Lats and Kelly and those other fools will be down there. Do say g'day to those guys if you are around. And uh, I look forward to uh, talking about the Sharks beating the Cowboys next week. Up, up, Grella. Up for over 50 years, people have come to see the Sharks play. Talent, skill, speed, intelligence, elite level athleticism. That's not these guys. Biased, one-eyed, opinionated, more often wrong than right. They make up for their complete lack of talent with pure dribble, gibberish, and enthusiasm. This is the ET Stand Podcast.